I was asked by someone who'd watched my how to account for depreciation in QuickBooks video. Shout out to Abdul. How do I make it recurring each month or each year? So this is for you. The link to that video is in the description. So if you want to go and check that one out first, but to answer the question, I'll just quickly show you. So in order to create a journal, we just go to add journal entry. And there we are. We put in our date and we set up the accounts on how to do it. I'm not going to go into that now. If you want to watch the depreciation video, you can just fast forward to that bit. But um, this is how you come into it initially. But what if you already have a journal and you want to know how to make it recurring? Well, my random way to find everything is in advanced search. There are many ways of finding it in QuickBooks. If you're a user, you will know that. I spend a lot of time in advanced, in advanced search because it saves me opening and closing various menus. So to get into there, you click your little hourglass thingy there. I called it an hourglass, not an hourglass, is it? And lo and behold, it actually opens up at journal entries. But you can pick whatever search criteria or whatever type of document you want it to search for. We actually do want journal entries. I want them to bring up all the journals. There won't be many in here as it's a sample file. So I'll just leave it blank and click search. And I'm just going to choose the first one that comes up. So if I click on that one. So here is a journal entry that already exists. And what I want to do is make it occur every month without me having to do anything is the best way. But you can actually set it up so that it reminds you to come and do it. This is often a good way if you have a loan and you want to account, say maybe on a third line for the actual interest, which might vary each month. So you can set a reminder to actually come in and change that amount and then save it. So you'll see when you have a saved journal or any saved entry, whether it be a bill or a, an expense, if you look down, you'll see it says make recurring. If we click on that, it takes us into our recurring journal entry screen. Now you can give it a name if you want. So in this case, it's loan, we'll call it monthly. You can call it what you like so that you remember it. We're going to schedule this one and we're not going to do it any days in advance. We're going to leave it to come up on the day that we want it to. If you put three or four, five or six, seven days, then that's the amount of days it will schedule in advance. So that's more useful if you want to be reminded. And if you put reminder here, seven days, seven days before you want it to be inputted, it will pop up to remind you on your, when you come up into your dashboard, you'll see it's one of the things that you need to do in your tasks. So here it's already showing us a monthly interval, which we want. We want it to be on the last day of every month. So we go to last. You can put a specific day if you choose. So it's the last day of every one month. You can do it every quarter, where it's every three months, entirely up to what you need. And the start date, now note, a start date must be after the date at which you're doing this. So today we are at the 8th of July. I cannot put in a recurring entry to start before the 8th under any circumstances because QuickBooks cannot retrospectively create a journal. It must be in the future. So for this one, we're going to do the next one to start on the 31st of July. And we want it to end by a certain date. So you put in the date there, it will more than likely be the next year. Or you can have it to end after a certain number of occurrences. So we want after the July one, we want it to run. We want it to run 10 times. So we put 10. If it's for a year, it's probably going to be 11 because you will have entered the first journal, which will be journal number one manually. And then it will recur another 11 times. Does that make sense? Alternatively, you can just do it once a year. And there it is annually every, you know, maybe your financial year is March. So the last day of March and it's to be after maybe if you're putting depreciation in, you're doing it the first year and then you want it for maybe another three years because it's a four year depreciation. So you want it to run for another three occurrences that will equal four. I'm not going to go into any more deep detail than that. I hope that makes sense. All you need to do is just save the template and it will be there. It will either run to schedule or it will remind you. And also to go back to the original journal, it's always useful to put 
um, a name in the journal. So you can search for the journal itself again if you wanted to. So it could be loan monthly. Um, I'm going to put July. You can't put too much in here. So I'll just, just say July. And then your next one would be loan monthly, August and loan monthly. Bearing in mind with recurring journals, it doesn't update this. So bear that in mind or just call it loan monthly and identify it by the recurring dates as they come up. So if I save that, yes, it's been reconciled. OK, if we ever want to find it again, then so let's close out of there. You have two options. So you sort by the, the journal entry here in the advanced. So if you've put an entry number in the actual journal, you just click it contains. Don't put equals because then you have to genuinely remember exactly what you put. So I'm just going to put loan here and search for that. And that brings up just each of the journals, individual journals that you've done. And you can see that's why it's useful to put a number in. If you want to find a specific recurring journal and amend it as a recurring journal, then you come over to your little wheel, your little cog here, click on that and you'll see where it asks you for recurring transactions. If you click on that and if you go down, you will find, and this shows you all your transactions, not just journals, bills and spending as well. And if you click on this one here, so you can either use it, which means if you click on it, you can change the journal. So when you have a reminder, you click on the use or just click on the journal and under the reminder, you can edit it, which is what you want to do. If you want to make a blanket change, you might want to change the date. The other thing that might be useful is if it's not a depreciation one, where it's a set date, that the loan might continue. You might get another influx of money. So you now want to change the amount and move the date another year. So you can just come in and do that. Cancel out there. Um, and the other things you can do, you can copy it. So what I always tell people to do is when you have the first loan, for example, let that one die and then copy and create another one. So you can always go back and see previous ones if you ever wanted to. You can pause it. Quite a lot of that is going on at the moment um, with COVID. People have got loan payment holidays, so they're pausing the scheduled um, loan payment. Or you can skip a date or plain old delete it. And I hope that helps. Thank you so much for watching.